Welcome to the 700 Club. Iran's pro proxies in the Middle East are now threatening the global economy. Attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea are disrupting supply lines and driving up prices. Well, in northern Gaza, the IDF is going underground to root out remaining terrorists. And Israel is signaling that it's ready for more hostage negotiations. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl brings us the details. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says troops are going into Hamas tunnels in northern Gaza to clean out what remains of the terrorists there. It's Fonaretsua. In the north of the Gaza Strip, the activity is focused on the final clearing of the area in Gaza and going underground to in-depth tunnels, where we have found a very large cache of all sorts and significance which will be revealed to the public. The IDF says it's uncovered some 1,500 tunnel shafts and underground passages since the beginning of the war, and most of them have been found under schools, hospitals, mosques, and United Nations facilities. The IDF released video of the interrogation of Ahmed Kahalot, director of the Kamal Adwan Hospital in Jabalia. He describes how Hamas uses hospitals for military purposes, has offices, and hides there because they feel it's safe that Israel won't bomb them. But Hamas acted as cowards, he says, leaving the people in the field while they hide. In the south, Gallant says, it will take a long time to clean out the terrorists there. In the south of the Gaza Strip, Khan Yunis has become the new city of terror. We are operating there, focusing our efforts. There's an action that will take place in various stages. It will take months until we reach our goals. Meanwhile, President Herzog says Israel is ready for another hostage deal. Israel is ready for another humanitarian pause and additional humanitarian aid in order to enable the release of hostages. The responsibility lies fully with uh, Sinwar and the leadership of Hamas. Islamic Jihad released a video showing two male hostages. That follows a Hamas video of three male hostages the day before, giving hope that the remaining more than 100 hostages, including women and two children, are still alive. Meanwhile, Iranian-backed Houthi rebels are ramping up their attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea trade route as nations band together to address the challenge. I think it's important to put it a little bit in perspective. Some six countries border the Red Sea. The Red Sea is a conduit for 10 to 15 percent of all global trade, 8 percent of global grain trade, and 12 percent of global seaborne oil trade. Of this total Red Sea trade, Greek, Chinese, Japanese, and German-owned vessels make up 40 to 50 percent of transits. All that underscores the dependence that these economies have around the world on the strategic trade. The route allows ships carrying oil and imported goods from Asia to cut through the Suez Canal, taking weeks off the trip to Europe and saving millions in shipping costs. Some of the world's largest shipping companies have already begun diverting their ships from the area, causing delays and higher prices. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says there's going to be a lot of naval hardware in the Red Sea to counter the threats. Bottom line is, these attacks have to stop. They need to stop. They're unacceptable. Uh, the United States, our allies and our partners, will do what we have to do to counter these threats and to protect these ships. Kirby says it's clear that Iran is behind the attacks. They are certainly providing the means, the, the tools, the capabilities, the weapons through which the Houthis are conducting these attacks. The Houthis may be pulling the trigger, but as I've said, uh, Iran's given them the guns. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, Iran is definitely behind these attacks, and they're using proxies to do it because they don't want to involve themselves directly in the war. They're definitely afraid of the retaliation that could come. Is there a coalition forming to protect the Red Sea, to protect the trade route? The answer is yes, but until that becomes absolutely secure, uh, shipping companies are they, they're commercial. They're, they're, they don't have weapons on board these ships. Uh, they're absolutely going to divert. Let's talk about these tunnels because I think we need to underline Iran's behind them too. These tunnels are uh, remarkably sophisticated. When you look at them, it's obvious that there was bore drilling equipment involved. You can drive vehicles through these tunnels. These aren't some kind of hand dug uh, affairs. That uh, th these are very sophisticated.
with manufactured steel to support the tunnel walls. They got all of that technology from Iran. Now, it's 50 meters below the surface. Uh, that is lower. That's 160 feet. The New York subway system isn't that low. It's there for bomb proofing. It's there to make sure that, that it can survive. And it was done with the full knowledge of the hospitals where the entrances are, uh, the uh, UN facilities where the entrances are. You can't have this kind of bore tr drilling equipment show up and, and do its work without everyone around it knowing exactly what's going on. Now, that's a war crime. Underline that when you hear of any war crimes by Israel, what Hamas has constructed here is a very sophisticated network of command and control and distribution underneath Gaza. And they have been specific that the uh, entrances and exits are around hospitals, around schools, about, around UN relief agencies. These are all war crimes. They're using civilians as cover, civilian buildings as cover for their terrorist activities. Well, anti-Israel bias continues to rage, especially among many in the Western media. And that bias is giving Hamas an edge in the crucial war for public opinion. Dale Hurd reports. Israel's version of Saturday Night Live lampoons the BBC for what some say has been one-sided coverage of the war with Hamas. Israel has bombed a hospital, killing hundreds of innocent people. More, more. Much better. Good evening, Rachel, from the illegal colony of Tel Aviv. Funny, perhaps, and yet in the real world, widespread anti-Israel news coverage is shaping world opinion and government policies. The war between Israel and Hamas is raging not only within Gaza, but also in newsrooms. And it's a media war many would say Hamas is winning. Some major news organizations have been treating the only democracy in the Middle East as equal to or worse than Hamas an internationally designated terrorist group that massacred innocent Israelis. And some have gotten into trouble by accepting as fact information put out by Hamas. Gil Hoffman is executive director of Honest Reporting, a pro-Israel media watchdog. There's never been a war where uh, the incorrect coverage has been so obvious, where the media has had to apologize over and over again, admit mistakes and uh, have lost their credibility so much. After the Hamas atrocities committed on October 7th, news stories repeatedly referred to the terrorist group as gunmen or militants rather than terrorists. Hamas is now saying on their official uh, telegram channel that major news organizations were quick to report claims made by Hamas that Israel had bombed the Al Ali Baptist Hospital, allegedly causing 500 civilian casualties. It was later found the damage came from an Islamic Jihad rocket and the casualties numbered in the dozens. The BBC has been one of the main culprits. It had to apologize for this claim about Israeli forces inside Al Shifa. A hospital in Gaza. They are targeting people, including medical teams as well as Arab speakers. The BBC later called it a misquote. This was incorrect and misquoted a Reuters report. This past summer, the BBC was forced to apologize when an interviewer said this to former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett. The Israeli forces are happy to kill children. The BBC was also forced to remove several Middle East reporters from the air after they posted on social media their support for the atrocities committed on October 7th. Dr. Tricia Miller with CAMERA, the Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting, says the anti-Israel bias in some of the media coverage meets the definition of anti-Semitism. Israel is consistently held to a different standard, a double standard, and the only way you can explain that is anti-Semitism. In response to the criticism, BBC CEO Deborah Turness wrote, We have faced criticism and complaints that we are biased both for and against Israel, and for and against the Palestinians. And while we strive to hold true to our 100-year commitment to impartiality, we of course sometimes get it wrong. We will continue to do what we have always done, 
to work without fear or favor and report what we see. However, news coverage doesn't occur in a vacuum, and biased coverage against Israel has had an effect. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Please get yourself forewarned and forearmed against this kind of biased coverage because it seems to be everywhere. Uh, we're just focused on in that story on what I would call mainstream news media. But just imagine what's happening on TikTok, on Instagram, on these social media platforms. It's absolutely incredible how sophisticated the Palestinians, uh, Hamas, Muslim Brotherhood, have all been in trying to win the war of propaganda. And what they're putting out there is absolutely wrong. Here's just one example where, you know, that, that uh, rocket attack supposedly from Israel, uh, it actually came from Hamas against that hospital and 500 reported dead and all of that was absolutely untrue. We're now seeing the reports instead of saying, well, the Gaza Ministry of Health says it, they've now morphed into the Palestinian Ministry of Health as, as if somehow that's even more, more valid or it's a different organization. It's the exact same people doing the exact same thing. They just renamed it and they morphed it. Here's another thing to watch out for. I'm seeing from the New York Times, this is supposedly the, the newspaper of record in the United States of America. They're coming out with survey data showing that somehow President Biden is going to be at risk in the upcoming election because of his support for Israel. It's absolutely incredible that they would use that in order to drive our foreign policy and our stand for Israel. I think the surveys are quite clear. The U.S. public supports Israel. The U.S. public recognizes Israel as the only democracy in the Middle East, as our staunch ally for over 70 years. And why would you ever say the, the American public supports a terror group? Uh, it, it just, it, it's absolutely incredible that you would do this, but that's the bias that they have. We have to call it for what it is. It is anti-Semitism. It is anti-Israel propaganda. What's behind it is a mystery to me because it seems to be pervasive these days. Let us stand up to it, call it for what it is, and it is a lie. The Colorado State Supreme Court disqualified former President Donald Trump from the Republican primary ballot in that state. The decision is a major blow to the GOP frontrunner and could set a precedent for other states. Gary Lane has details. The unprecedented Colorado High Court decision came on a narrow 4-3 to three vote, with justices ruling the former president is barred from the ballot for violating the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution for activity related to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Section 3 is the Insurrection Clause of the 14th Amendment. It disqualifies a candidate from holding office if they took an oath to uphold the Constitution and then engaged in insurrection or rebellion. Trump ignored the Colorado ruling during an Iowa campaign stop Tuesday night, but reminded voters of what he claims is an ongoing witch hunt against him. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you. One of Trump's biggest critics in the Republican presidential field, Chris Christie, said he, quote, does not believe Donald Trump should be prevented from being president of the United States by any court. GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy said he'll withdraw from the Colorado state primary until Trump is allowed on the ballot. And he's challenging the rest of the Republican field to do the same. Before the ruling, Trump attorney Scott Gessler argued the state justices should allow voters to make up their minds about Donald Trump. It's the people of the United States of America that get to make those decisions. Not six voters in Colorado. Trump is set to appeal the ruling to the United States Supreme Court. The court has never ruled before on the clause, created 150 years ago, to prevent Confederates from holding office after the Civil War. Since then, it's been largely in disuse until uh, the January 6th attacks. If the Supreme Court upholds the Colorado decision, it's obviously the end for Trump's political career. He can't run for office again in the United States. The high court must decide if it will hear the case, and if so, it must rule by January 5th, when Colorado primary ballots are scheduled for printing.
Another Trump case, this one taken to the U.S. Supreme Court by special counsel Jack Smith, asked the court to expedite a hearing on Trump's argument that he has presidential immunity in an election interference case. All these cases don't seem to be hurting Trump with Republican voters. In Iowa, the latest poll shows him leading other Republicans by 50 percent. Nationally, he is the GOP frontrunner by a wide margin with nearly 63 percent of the vote. Gary Lane, CBN News. Thanks for that report, Gary. The Iowa caucus is just weeks away, and the leading GOP candidates are stumping the Hawkeye State. That's where CBN's David Brody caught up with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for a one-on-one -on -one interview. You can watch it right here on tomorrow's 700 Club and all of our CBN News platforms. Well, as the world's Christians prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, one city has already seen a Christmas miracle. In Hanoi, Vietnam, the communist government allowed an unprecedented public Christmas celebration. As CBN Asia correspondent Lucille Toulousen shows us, the change stems from a decade-long effort by Christians to serve the capital city. More than 14,000 from different Christian denominations attended the recent Christmas Peace Festival in Vietnam's capital of Hanoi. The day-long affair featured family activities, talent shows, and evangelistic plays. It culminated with praise and worship, followed by American evangelist Reed Saunders sharing the gospel. More than 1,000 came forward to receive Christ. Ten years ago, Christian events like this in communist Vietnam wouldn't have happened. But in recent years, local government officials have joined the audience. This year, the Vietnamese police even hosted a Christmas dinner for all the pastors, symbolizing respect and understanding between the police force and the religious community. Hanoi International Fellowship lead pastor Jakob Bloomberg attributes this breakthrough to the Love Hanoi campaign, which their church began in 2012. Whenever you meet government officials, we were not asking for permits or for uh, other things. We were asking how we can love their city. And uh, I think over the years, that really has made an impression that we as Christian foreigners are there to contribute to society. Through the years, the Christian church has developed good relations with the government through projects such as cleaning up streets and bridges, conducting workshops and other community services. Love Hanoi also provided platforms for churches to partner together in expanding God's kingdom by expressing the love of Christ in the different spheres of society. For Love Hanoi to be duplicated in other Vietnamese cities, the campaign has evolved into the Love Your City movement. With the Love Your City movement, not only is the Christian church gaining favor from the government, but most importantly, the church is being known for God's love, and many Vietnamese are experiencing His love. When the Hanoi International Fellowship began in 1995, the government did not allow Vietnamese to attend the foreign church. And so at one point, while at a cafe, I asked the colonel, who was my liaison with the city police, if it was okay to have Vietnamese attend our church. And he just spontaneously said, it's okay if you take care of their spiritual health, it's okay. Pastor Jacob and his wife Linda credit Regent University because they completed their master's online, which has helped them serve in Vietnam for over 26 years. Master's in education for Linda. I'm very grateful that Regent was at the forefront of online education well before it became a thing and allowed us to continue to work in ministry, to raise our family and live in Asia, all while doing our master's degrees. And master's in organizational leadership for Pastor Jacob. So that really was a, a key for me and a great learning experience in leading such a diverse congregation. And to inspire and convince people that to love with the love of Jesus is all it takes to transform a city. Lucille Telusen, CBN News, Hanoi. What a beautiful effort, and it's so special to see that Regent University is at the forefront of this global effort. Gordon, back to you. It is, and it's wonderful to see people obeying Scripture. Here it is from Jeremiah 29, verse 7. 
Pray and seek the prosperity of the city to which I send you. And what a wonderful thing. When they meet with city officials, when they meet with the government, we're here to love Hanoi. We want to seek its prosperity. We want to see, seek the happiness of the people living here. What government wants to resist that? And it's, it's, you see the fruit of it. Love never fails. And for Linda and Jacob, it's wonderful to see Regent University graduates changing the world. That is our motto, Christian leadership to change the world. Well, as a singer, Celeste Kellogg has opened for a number of big names, including Miley Cyrus, Kelly Clarkson, and Leanne Rimes. But now she's making a name for herself. A fresh voice in country music these days is that of Celeste Kellogg, a CMA recording artist to release an album in 2024 and currently has two singles on the Nashville charts. Celeste started singing early with her parents, then in church, and at age 12, landed in a Disney pop group. Now with an established career, Celeste looks forward to reaching a wider audience with both her strong voice and strong faith. All right, well, please welcome to the 700 Club for the very first time, Celeste Kellogg. Celeste, thank hey. you so much for being with us today. <laughs> thank you for having me. It is such a pleasure. Okay, so it honestly seems like you were born to do this. How long have you been performing and singing? Um, I've been singing and dancing as long as I can remember. There's plenty of home videos <laughs> that we might not want to see. Uh, but I started singing in church when I was like five or six years oh old. Goodness. And it was my favorite night of the week, Wednesday nights, when we had uh, church rehearsal and mm -hmm. then Sunday obviously I just I loved it I That's grew up awesome. with with music all around yeah yeah so the piece said that you were actually singing with your parents are your parents yes. musical as well yes my mom uh, was a dancer and okay. my dad is a singer okay um, so so my dad was singing me to sleep instead of oh. telling me stories when I was a little little oh girl my gosh. <laughs> so I, I just I grew up with music yes yeah. and it's in your blood yes it's in your blood yes. I love that okay so you were actually a part of a Disney kids pop group <laughs> yes. I was just telling you I was like I probably saw you on the Disney Channel at some know. point how, what was that experience like how did you even get that gig it was it was crazy so I was checking uh, Radio Disney's website because at the time here at Hampton Roads we actually had a local Radio Disney station yes so yeah. they were holding auditions for a, a local pop group um, mm -hmm. that would open for any major Disney artist that would come in so we got to open for Miley Cyrus and the Jonas Brothers and Raven and so many wow. others that came into town that year our first show uh, was at the Mattress USA, <laughs> and the mics were feeding back. But the next one was at a sold-out arena at the Ted Constance Center, wow. and it was just culture shock. I oh guess gosh. from one to the next, yeah. but it was an amazing experience. Yeah. Definitely. Well, you you had a, a pretty big offer come to the table. It was yes. a screen test for mm -hmm. the show Glee, yes. and I know that was very popular when I was in high school, middle oh, yeah. school, even beyond, but you actually turned that down. Yes. Why did you say I no? I mean, I went through like seven rounds of auditions and callbacks and, and sending in videotapes and everything and came down to me and one other person, mm -hmm. and I really like thought hard about it. I prayed about it. And I was also getting ready to go on an anti-bullying school tour where I would go into different schools and sing to kids and talk about my experiences with bullying and just, you know, it's a very positive like situation. So yeah. I spent all night literally praying on my porch, like which direction do I go? Mm -hmm. And I felt led to go to the anti-bullying school tour. And, and through that, we've gotten word back that, um, that we saved a lot of lives on that wow. tour, myself and the other artists that were on there. And I felt like that's where I was supposed to go. Mm. Well, you make it you make it important for you to make sure that your faith is expressed through your music. Yes. Um, has that been tough to do? It has. <laughs> so so in, in, in the music industry and in a lot of industries, you know, it's it's not necessarily the norm to, to be um, very, like, faith prominent. Like, one of my first singles, the one that charted on radio, um, I had the word God in mm -hmm. the song. And, and somebody was like, You're, that's never going to make it to radio if you put God's name in there. I was like, well, then I guess it's not going to make mm -hmm. it to radio because I'm keeping his name yeah. in there. Um, but I just, I've, I've struggled a lot in, like, where do I necessarily fit in because... I'm walking a smaller path, you know, mm -hmm. that, than others that might not be walking the same path. And I was praying about it. I always pray about it when I'm walking my dog in the morning. Yeah. And the Bible verse, do not conform to the patterns of this world, yeah. popped in my head. I hadn't mm. thought that for years. And I got confirmation the next day on a podcast and the following mm -hmm. day 
after that at church, the pastor preached on that verse. And oh I've not gosh. heard it since. And I was like, okay, yeah. okay, God, <laughs> yes. I need to continue to be myself and the, and the girl that you made me. Yeah. Well, how have you been able to stay grounded, grounded and so steadfast in not conforming to the patterns of this world? Like what grounds you? Um, just, I, I, I grew up in a really great, strong family atmosphere. Me, my mom and dad, the three of us, super tight. My mom prayed before I was ever born. She's like, I just want her to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, the prayers of your mother. Amen. <laughs> always, Come on, yes. I know you know, you know, yeah, right? I do. Yeah. So, um, I feel like just that solid foundation. I was in church every, every weekend, um, wow. up through the age of 12 until I really started traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. but, that's just that foundation there. It was built yeah. strong. I mean, there's been times where I'm like, okay, I've lost it a little bit, but I always, always came back because that's absolutely. where my heart, my heart was rooted. Yeah, absolutely. And I also have heard that you like to watch the 700 Club. I, I gotta mention that. I, I gotta do. mention that. I feel like I messaged you on Instagram. I was like, I love listening to you. Oh my gosh. And like just, just hearing the positivity. Yeah. It just, it makes my day, honestly. Mm. Yes. That, and that's so encouraging for us. I know for sure. Yes. Well, you actually have two singles on mm -hmm. the National charts right now yep. what are those songs and then also tell us about your up-and-coming album okay so there's a beach somewhere charted on the on the music road country radio airplay charts which was amazing that is so cool. country swagger the one that has god's yes. name in hey, it come on, like, yeah. yes you know what <laughs> I knew it. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, but but I've just been super proud of, of the success of those songs, and I'm working on a new album called Back in Boots, My Journey, mm. um, that's going to kind of talk about my whole musical journey, like from day one up until now. I love and, that. And I'm just really excited. That's coming out in April of next year. That's so awesome. And you also have a Christmas song out. I do. <laughs> okay, what is the Christmas I do. song? It's called Save a Dance for Me This Christmas. CMT's featuring it actually right now, and it's in Walmarts nationwide. They're playing it. I have that no idea how that happened. That is so, happens. so cool. And you write your own music, right? Yes, I do. That, that I is do. absolutely incredible. Thank well, you. you also, today, guys, it's a treat. She's actually going to perform for us live. You're going to be singing Remember Me, which is yes. a song by Alabama. Why yes. is that song so special for you? It's actually oh. a Christmas song, right? Yes, it is a Christmas song, but it's, it's it really touches on, you know, you get kind of lost in the holidays and, and the festivities with family and friends, and, which is great, but it kind of centers you back, like remember what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot to me. I remember the first like five times I heard it, I just cried. <laughs> so oh I've sung it enough now that I won't cry today, <laughs> hopefully. But it's, okay. it's, it's a beautiful song. That's and awesome. it's just what it's what Christmas is all about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, last question for you, Celeste. If some young individuals or just individuals of all ages are watching and they really, you know, feel a tug in their heart to do music as yeah. a career or just a dream in their hearts, but mm -hmm. they're intimidated by that what word, word of encouragement would you give them? I would just say follow that dream. You got, and you have to work hard. Mm -hmm. It does take a lot of sacrifice, whether it's music or, or whatever you, you're doing. But if there's a passion there, I mean, I truly feel like if, if it's something that you've felt since you were a kid, that's something God put in your heart and laid in, laid on your heart. And mm -hmm. I just, just stay, stay true to yourself. You know, yeah. don't get lost in it. Stay true, stay grounded to your morals, but just mm -hmm. do, do what you love. And yeah. Follow that dream because it, it'll get you It'll get you somewhere. Yes, yes and amen <laughs> yes. to all that. Here is Celeste Kellogg with her rendition of Remember Me. When you're opening those presents underneath the Christmas tree, oh, remember me. And when you put
Welcome back to the 700 Club for the CBN News Break. The Northeast is still dealing with the aftermath of deadly storms where heavy rains and rivers overflowing their banks and engulfing entire neighborhoods. First responders rescued people from the dangerous floodwaters. In one community, a house surrounded by high water was consumed by flames as firefighters struggled to get close enough to help. Meanwhile, people are filling up on gas to fill their generators as workers race to restore power. The governor of Maine has declared an emergency in 14 counties. Well, turning to Texas, where Governor Greg Abbott is taking the fight against illegal immigration into his own hands by signing a law empowering local and state police to arrest people suspected of illegally entering this country. The penalty is up to six months in jail and repeat offenders can be imprisoned up to 20 years. Judges also have the discretion to send them back to Mexico. President Biden says only the federal government has the authority to enforce immigration laws. The ACLU and Mexican government are expected to challenge the law in court. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Your daughter is a little boy who was born with a cleft lip and palate. All he needed to have a normal life was just a simple surgery. Yet his parents had no way to pay for it. And thanks to you, they didn't have to. Shundo was born with a cleft lip and palate, so growing up, he could barely eat. I look at Shundo's lips and couldn't stop crying. His immunity got really weak, and he always got sick. The couple didn't want people to make fun of their son, so they kept him at home. I closed all the doors and windows. He always cried to get out and wanted me to put the ointment I used for his mosquito bites on his lips. I said, honey, this ointment won't fix your lip. You need surgery. But the Wongs are poor and knew they'd never be able to afford surgery. I started looking online for charities that could help and found CBN. I was so happy. CBN paid for Shundo's cleft lip surgery. I said to him, you are strong and healthy now, like a little star. CBN said they helped us because of God's love. I thank the CBN donors for loving us so much. It's a love I had never felt. You saved my baby and you saved my family. Isn't it wonderful to be the answer for pr to prayers for people around the world? You can do that by joining the 700 Club. That wonderful family could never afford that surgery, but you came in, you said, yes, I want to help. You said, yes, we can handle this. We want you to have a hope. We want to have you to have a future. That's what God wants for you. We want to be there for you in your time of need. If you want to join with us in everything we're doing around the world, it's real simple. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. Well, triking and praying, those are Sherilyn Nickerson's favorite activities. She and her friends call themselves the Trike Angels, and they pedal their three-wheel bikes through neighborhoods praying for people. Well, not long ago, Sherilyn was in need of prayer herself, and that's just what she got, along with a healing miracle. At 77, I have got to keep moving and I've got to keep the exercise going and watching what I eat and take care of myself. It was a quadruple bypass and diabetes diagnosis that prompted Sherlyn Nickerson to start riding her three-wheeled bicycle. She started years ago, not long after her husband passed. Knew that I had to take better care of myself. I knew that I had to start 
uh, as they say, use it or lose it. Before long, it became more than just exercise. It became a community as others joined her. It also became a ministry for the group as they began praying for their neighbors while writing. They call themselves the Trike Angels. We just have a really, really wonderful time in the Lord and being able to be out there and, and ministering. And it's awesome because you feel like you're really out there doing God's work. Then one day in December 2022, she hit a patch of ice and crashed into a curb, injuring her right knee. I was really scared when I fell. It was against cement. And I, I was in a puddle of water, so I was soaking wet with all this ice water. A friend gave her a ride home. Sherlyn tried to get some rest. I tried to not go to the hospital, but at 1 o'clock in the morning, it was hurting so bad. I woke my son up and I said, I've got to go to the hospital because it is hurting so bad. After taking x-rays and other tests that came back negative, the ER staff sent Sherlyn home and told her to take ibuprofen for the pain and swelling. I mean, I knew I couldn't ride because I could barely walk. And so they put a, a knee brace on it. And I wore the knee brace probably for about two to three weeks. She then sought the help of a chiropractor, but neither the treatments nor medication helped. And it would wake me up at night. My sleep would be interrupted and it just, it hurt. Even then, Sherlyn continued to ride, holding tightly to her faith, believing for healing. People would ask me, how's the knee? And I'd say, God's got it. He's got it. And I just kept on trucking. Then on April 17th, five months after her injury, she turned on the 700 Club. And many people, you've heard the stories of the right mm -hmm. knee, and you're going, well, I've got knee problems too. And whether it's the right knee or the left knee or both knees, just lay your hands on your knees right now. And we agree touching them in Jesus' name. Be healed. And I just kind of said, Lord, I wish that could be me, <laughs> you know, because it'd been so long. The next thing I know, they're going off air. Yeah, there's one thing. When someone is saying, could that possibly be me? This is such a strange thing, but you have a very large red patent leather purse that you carry year round. God's healing you. And of course, everybody knows I carry my red purse and they see it all the time and they know I carry that purse all the time. And I just said, God, that's me. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And I reached down to rub my knee that I'd just been rubbing, and it didn't hurt. And I went, wait a minute, God. And then I stuck my leg out and bent it, and I couldn't believe that I could bend it all the way that I bent it. You know, it was just unreal, because I couldn't bend it before. And so I just was praising God. Sherlyn says her miraculous healing has encouraged not just her, but those around her to believe God for their own miracles. And I had somebody at the church say to me, before you shared what God did for you, she said, I used to think that was all fake on TV. She said, I'm listening for my word now. Sherlyn is still writing with the trike angels pain-free and praying for others. It's increased my faith more to pray for other people, to, to believe that they can be healed too. And so it's, it's more than anything, it is to encourage people that God's real and that he will heal. God is real and he will heal. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can count on him. You can count on the sacrifice for your sins, and you can count on the sacrifice for your healing. It happened at the same time. By his stripes, we are healed. Now, here's Cheryl Lynn. She's actually praying. She's, she's doing these wonderful prayer rides, and they're the trike angels. And what they want to do is seek the prosperity of their neighborhood. They're obeying Jeremiah 29, 7. And in that, she gets injured. Now, here's a wonderful verse. I wish it were quoted more. God wants you to prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. The apostle John wrote that. The, the apostle who was closest to Jesus. 
he knew his heart. He heard his heartbeat. And in that heartbeat, realized it's for all people, for all time. God wants you to prosper and be in health. He doesn't want you to suffer. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on that cross, so that by his stripes, you could be healed. It's for you. It's for everybody. It's for all time, the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you read the Gospels, did Jesus leave anyone out? And the answer is no, he was always making room. He really frustrated the Pharisees because he kept expanding the table. Who was invited in? Who was going to be able to be with? My house is a house of prayer for all nations. This is what he wanted. This is his heart's desire. So for you right now, believe that. Believe it's the earnest desire of Jesus Christ. He desired it so much, he was willing to be beaten for you. By his stripes, we are healed. Walk into this wonderful revelation that it's the will of God for you, that you prosper, that you be in good health just as your soul prospers. Ashley and I are going to pray for you. Before we pray, we've asked you to send in prayer requests. We have them on our Christmas tree here, and the CBN staff is gathering to pray for these wonderful prayer requests, to pray for people, to let them know that God loves them. God wants you to be healed. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be forgiven. He wants all of these things. So here's a prayer request. Healing from esophageal cancer. Uh, there's a tumor that I could sleep and overcome the anxiety and sadness that keeps me awake. And then reversal and healing of vascular dementia. I have somebody needing a miracle of stage four pancreatic cancer. Somebody else healed of Parkinson's disease. Somebody else asking that our small family business would lead many people to Jesus and somebody else to be delivered from an addiction to porn. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we lift all of these requests to you. And we just declare over them that by your stripes, they are all healed. And it happened 2,000 years ago. You took on all our infirmity, all our pain, all our trouble. You took it all on. And you did it for all eternity. So we receive you. We receive all that you have for us. We receive the forgiveness that you, you, you paid the price for. We receive the healing that you paid the price for. And we receive it now in the name of Jesus. Ashley, God's given you something. Yeah, this scripture just comes to mind. Give and it will be given unto you. Press down, shaken shaken together, running over into your lap. With the measure you give, it will be given unto you. And I just pray for those who are seeking God for a financial breakthrough. Give and it will be given unto you. Continue to trust God with this area of your life. Don't hold it so closely that you don't even give it over to him. Give it over to him. Surrender. And he's got you. He's got plans to prosper you a hope and a future for you. Be encouraged by that. There's someone you're suffering with severe sciatica going into your right hip, and it was it's just incredibly painful. God just released all of that. Uh, your your nerves are now unpinched. You're 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 going to have normal function, normal hip movement. All of that pain, all of that numbness, leaving you right now, in Jesus' name. Yeah, somebody else drinking um, some hot tea right now in a in a small little teacup, and I just believe God is healing you from um, shaking. It's like your hands you have you have significant tremors in your hands, and and doing small things like that, like drinking a cup of tea, can sometimes be difficult for you. And I just believe God is healing whatever neurological thing is going on. He's healing that for you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank Sometimes you. Sometimes with hip problems, you're sitting on a stool because it's so hard for you to sit in a normal chair. God's healing you and everyone with cancer right now, in Jesus' name, be healed and be made whole. Amen and amen. We leave you these words from Chronicles. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. God bless. We'll see you again.